you ever been stressed, worried, anxious, confused, maybe all of the above? Are you worried about your next paycheck or your diet? What about your grades? Will they be good enough to get you into that college? Are the deadlines at work piling up? While your marriage is falling apart? Do you feel like a bill is due every day? And with all these repairs, you can never get ahead? Does it seem like the whole world is closing in around you? How can you win the war against worry when you just feel overwhelmed? Good morning, LifePoint. How's everybody doing today? Are we good? All right. I want to welcome you guys. If this is your very first time at LifePoint, we're glad to have you with us. My name is Jeff. I'm the pastor here, and we feel like it's such a privilege having you here. We're in a series called Overwhelmed, and we're going to be jumping into that. But before we do, I just want to acknowledge a few things that have been going on around LifePoint. Exciting stuff. If you, uh, ladies, if you were a part of our Friday night, first ever LifePoint Women's Night, man, would you make a little bit of noise? I heard the ladies had a great time. Obviously, for obvious reasons, I was not there, not a lady, but I heard it was incredible and the ladies are already saying, when are we going to do another one? So that was awesome. We kicked off our semester of life groups this past week and if you're thinking like, that was this past week, I was so overwhelmed I forgot about it. Hey, listen, you can come back out Wednesday night, 6.30, right here on campus. We had over 400 people connecting in groups. So I encourage you, come on back out. It's not too late to get connected. And this coming week is also a big week. As you heard, Momentum on Monday. If you've never had a chance to be a part of one of our Momentum gatherings, we are able to just be able to celebrate and worship for a little bit longer. Uh, we have a special Momentum this week on Monday. They're usually on Wednesdays. But this coming week, we have them on Monday night, and we've got a special guest, Pastor Randy Bazet, out of Bayside Church down in Florida, is going to be here. And the reason we're doing it on Monday is because on Tuesday, we're hosting this conference. We've got over 200 pastors and leaders that are going to be here on Tuesday, and it's going to be incredible. And so I want to ask you guys, one, if you've never been to Momentum, you need to be here Monday night. It is incredible. Two, on Tuesday, would you partner with us and would you commit to pray during our time together that God would use this time as we encourage these pastors? We have a chance to share with them about how we do church and what God has called us to do here at LifePoint. And so we're going to get to help pastors be more effective at reaching their cities and their communities. And so let me just ask you this. Will you commit to partner with us on Tuesday in prayer for these pastors? If you do, say amen. I'm in. All right, well, guys, I appreciate that. I really think God's going to use it in a powerful way. So let's do this. Let's pray, and let's begin Overwhelm Part 3. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege that we have, God, to simply gather today. Lord, we acknowledge that this is, a, this is not just something that we have to do, God. This is an opportunity that we have to, to be able to gather, to learn, to worship. And so, Father, we just look to you, and we worship you, and we praise you. We pray that today you'd help us hear from you. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Well, during this series, uh, we have a theme verse. It's, it also happens to be the theme verse for our church. It's John chapter 10, verse 10. I'm going to ask our tech team, if you guys would go ahead and put that up on the screen. Here's how I want us to begin today. I want us to make this declaration together. And so when I hit three, as loud as you can, I want us to read this verse out together, all right? So on three, with everything you've got, let's read this together out loud. One, two, three. The thief comes only to steal and kill and... Hang on. Hold on. Are we... Are we having... You never know with text. Okay, hold on. We can push through. No. Somebody back there, give me a... Are we... we, All right, they're telling me we're good. Let's back it up and try that again. Ready? One, two, three. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And I have come, if you know it, say it from memory, that they may have life and have it to the full. Amen and amen. Okay, hey. Are we back? Are we? Okay, I don't know if it's a loose cable. Maybe try jiggling it. Have you? Smack, okay. Are we? I want us to start. Are we good? You fixed it? it was it something? Never mind. We'll fix it. Okay. One last time. You good? All right, man, thanks. Matt Dudley, everyone. All right, one more time on three. One, two, three. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. All right, hey, we made it through. Put your hands together. We did it. 
Now, throughout this series, we've been talking about how we go from living this overwhelmed experience, this overwhelmed life, to how do we overcome, if God says, I've come that you might have life to the full, how do we experience that? And we've acknowledged that Satan doesn't have to destroy us in order to overwhelm us. All he's got to do is distract us. All he's got to do is get us distracted from what is most important. He, if he can get our eyes off of what is most important, he can get us to focus our life on things that are less important. Let me get you to participate with me. All right, Raise your hand if you would say you are an easily distracted individual. Okay. Some of you, you you're, you're like, why are they raising their hand? I wasn't paying attention. Right? <laughs> you should raise your hand. Right? You should raise your hand. Um, hang on a moment. That's funny. If you have not put your phone on silent or vibrate, it's a great opportunity for you to do so. So we, we just acknowledge most of us in this room are extremely easily distracted. By far, this is the most distracted service um, by, by far. And I would say that the biggest distraction that we live with, it's new to our generation, is simply this. Right? Think about this. No generation before us has had access to the technology that we have, and yet we are the most distracted generation of any before. Now, I want you to be honest, okay? You're in church. You can't lie, all right? Be honest. Have you ever gotten honked at at a stoplight because you missed the light turning green because you were busy checking your phone? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Some of you were like, oh. I don't know if that counts as texting while driving if you're at a stoplight because you're not technically going. I don't know the rules on that. Somebody probably does. But what did we do at stoplights before we had smartphones? Anybody know? Right? Somebody yelled out in one of the services, we did Chinese fire drills. I'm like, that's even more dangerous. But think about this. Years ago, nobody knew what TWD was, right? Texting while driving. No one had a clue what that meant. But nowadays, we do. If you were to get pulled over for texting while driving in North Carolina, do you know what the fine is for that? 230 bucks. Some of you are like, yes, I know, right? You've had that. That sounds... It sounds pretty steep, but listen, if you live in Utah, you think 230 is steep? Utah is 750 bucks for texting while driving. But that is nothing compared to Alaska. Alaska, if you get caught texting while driving, it's $10,000 and the possibility of a year in jail, right? And I mean, again, people, I mean, lives have been lost because of people driving while distracted. We're easily distracted. Right? And, and I would say that the most distraction, biggest distraction in my life is the technology. It is this little gadget. I think it's funny that we're having this conversation days after the biggest cell phone release in the history of all cell phone releases, right? The iPhone 6, 6 Plus came out on Friday, 20 or, or, or 4 million pre orders in 24 hours, right? We love our technology. But what we don't realize is that these little gadgets are the biggest distraction that many of us live with. I mean, just if I can be honest for a moment, this has a tendency of being the first thing I look at in the morning, right? And rightfully so. It doubles as an alarm. It sits by my bed. It goes off. I wake up. And next thing you know, 20, 30 minutes later, I'm busy checking everything on. I mean, I've caught up on everything that happened over the night, right? I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. And before you know it, I've got to get to the gym. And all of a sudden, I get distracted from things that are more important. It's also one of the last things that I tend to look at before I fall asleep. Which if you're married and you are connecting with that, that's kind of sad, right? Hey, good night, honey. Boom. What's going on online? Can I think of something more exciting to do in that moment? Probably something more important than checking my phone. But it it happens, right? It happens. And And then some of us, if we're just being real, if we have our phone with us and we hear a notification go off, we go crazy until we can check our notification, right? We're like, Who's, who is that? Who could that text message be from? What could be going on? Could be the president for all I know. Could be some like massive emergency and we check it and we're like, no, nope, no, nope, someone just liked my status. That's all. That's all. Not a big deal, right? But they distract us. You, you've, been, you, you've been at that meal with that person that had their fork in one hand and their phone in the other, right? You've had that meal, and you're like, put it down for crying out loud, right? We live easily distracted. You know, then don't even get me started on group text. You ever got stuck on a group text? 47 people, you don't even know who half of them are, and they're all commenting, and your phone's blowing up. Like, how do I get off of this thing, right? This is impossible. And and then, 
And, and it, anybody ever get a phantom vibration? Your phone is in your pocket. You could have swore you felt your leg vibrate to take it out and realize, nope, nope. I'm just, I'm just imagining. I have imaginary notifications going on because it happens so much. All right, and then, hello, phone's in the bathroom. What's the rule on this? Right? We would say no, but hey, man, what are you doing? Dude, you really don't want to know. You don't want to know. Right? It's odd. I would love to see a study that talks about how much our restroom time has increased since the invention of smartphones. Right? I'm thinking like 400% maybe. If you've ever sat there so long your legs went numb, you know what I'm talking about. All right? Just, I mean, it's never happened to me, but I hear... Right? But we're, we're just, I say all that to say we're easily distracted, right? We can easily miss out on what's most important because of these distractions. And for some, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a smartphone for everybody. For others, it's, it's, maybe it's your online connection. Maybe it's your, you know, your computer. You sit down to do work and you've got all these tabs and 14 different windows that are open and, and you're easily distracted. I know for me, when I'm sitting down working on a message, I could be in the middle of just feeling like I'm tracking with God and I'm writing this message out that I'm getting ready to preach and all of a sudden a little notification comes across the top of my screen and you know, so-and-so commented on your status on Facebook and I'm like, well, I wonder what they said. So I click that, which leads me to click something else and now I'm watching videos of who knows what and an hour later, I have digitally stalked every single one of you on Facebook, right? Then I go back to my notes and it's like I lost that flow of where I was at. It happens all the time, right? You know, then you throw in favorite TV shows and it's so easy to binge watch thanks to Netflix than ever before. We go, next thing you know, like seven shows have gone by, right? And, and we didn't even realize it. Or maybe you go home, it's easy to put your headphones on and get online and you're gaming with friends for, you know, days, you're like, you know, life is passing me by. We can live more in a virtual reality than we do in reality. And I say all that just to prove the point that we live in an easily distracted world, right? You and I can be easily distracted with all of these, you know, inputs and technology and things that affect us. Here's what I want. I want you to take one of these gray note cards out, okay? You'll find these on the seat back in front of you. If you're on the front row, they're actually in a little bin under your chair, so just reach up under it, grab this. I've titled this message, Going Dark. So you can write across the top, Overwhelm, Part 3, Going Dark. And I want you to get this, okay? So have it out, write this down. If there's one thing you take away from our time together, it's simply this. I want you to get this, write this down. In order to tune in to what really matters, write this down, okay? In order to... important. And that's, the, that's probably the most important thing that I could say in our entire time together. I want you to get that. Did you get that? Some of you were like, well, I, I didn't get that. What is... <laughs> all right, confession, confession. We have been working hard to distract you guys all service, okay? Some of you have been freaking out on the inside. You're like, turn the stinking phones off. Who's crumbling chips and coughing? Get that person a cough drop for crying. All right, our team has been working hard. Our tech guys in the booth, we've been messing everything up just to prove that distractions happen and they're so easy, so easy to get us distracted from what's most important. Some of you are here and you're like, man, these guys are really disorganized. It's not always that bad. Promise, promise. My point is, my point is we live in an easily distracted world and distractions are, are nothing new, nothing new. Every generation has had to deal with distractions. I want to take you to a story. If you've got a Bible, go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. So if you have a Bible, go there. If you, uh, you say you don't have a Bible, but you've got a smartphone or a tablet, feel free to take it out. We're not going to make fun of you for having a phone out. we uh, totally cool. If you want to use your phone, you've got a Bible app, take it out, all right? We want you to be able to follow along. We're also going to have all the scripture here on the screens for you. But if you don't own a Bible today, listen, we love to give you a Bible. We think one of the greatest gifts we could give is a copy of God's Word. So before you leave Life Point today, just stop by our, our lounge in the lobby and just ask for one of those Bibles. Say, it's, can I have a Bible? It's our gift to you. We want you to have it. You can go home. You can read this story for yourself. But Luke chapter 10, verse 38. If you've got it, say, I got it. 
All right, if you're still looking for it, just keep on looking. You're going to find it in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or you can just follow along on the screens. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Let's look at this together. Here's what this story says. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. And she had a sister called Mary. Now, here's what's going on real quick, all right? Real quick, Jesus is coming to town, and Mary and her sister Martha have got the opportunity of a lifetime. Jesus is going to stop by their house. I mean, could you imagine if you found out that Jesus was coming to your house? You'd be like freaking out. You'd be like, oh my goodness, this this place is a wreck. Somebody, you know, let's straighten things up. And so here they are with the opportunity of a lifetime. And what I want you to see when we look at this story is I want you to see how each of these sisters reacted differently to the opportunity that was given to them. Take a look at what happens. Verse 39. So Martha has a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was what? Say it with me. Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. I want you to notice these things had to be done, or so she thought. She came to him, she came to Jesus, and she asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. So here's what's going on. Jesus shows up. Mary is like, oh, Jesus. I get the chance to be with Jesus. And she she drops everything, plops down at Jesus' feet, and just hangs out with him. Meanwhile, Martha's just kind of huffing and puffing, like, look at Mary, always, you know, just being lazy, hanging out with Jesus, leaving me to do everything that's got to be done. Notice that Martha was distracted, and the Bible says she was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Think about this. She's hosting the Son of God, right? Pretty big deal. I don't know about the most, like, important person you ever had at your house, but just imagine you're hosting someone of royalty. What are you going to do, you know? You're going to start sweating the prep. Right? You're going to be freaking out. You're going to be, you're going to be running around vacuuming everything. Right? You're going to be dusting. And you don't just dust what people can see. You're dusting behind the pictures. Because this is Jesus for crying out loud. Right? Like, he knows that you didn't dust behind the picture. Right? He's Jesus. He knows if you took all the junk that was you know, in the living room and just stuck it in the closet. He knows. Because he's Jesus. So you're cleaning everything. You're straightening. You're vacuuming. You're dusting. Then you gotta, you know, you're like, all right, what are we going to feed? What do you feed the Son of God? What kind of a meal, you know, are you going to give to Jesus? So here's Martha, and she's cooking, and she's, she's you know, she doesn't want to give him the cheap plates, right? No paper plates for Jesus, so she's got to be getting the, the good china out of the china cabinet, you know, that you haven't used since the day you got married, but you registered for it, and you got it. She's getting the good china out, and she's, you know, she's, she's, she's fixing things around the house. I want you to notice that she was doing what she thought had to be done. Martha was busy doing Good things. It wasn't like she was off gaming in the other room while she, while, while she could have hung out with Jesus. Martha was doing what any reasonable person would have done, right? If you've ever had somebody over to your house, you know that you're going to straighten things up a little bit. You're going to tidy the living room. You may not worry about the bedrooms. You just close those doors, right? Clean the bathroom a little bit because you want people to think you always live this way, right? We always live this way. Truth be told, many of the times our houses are a little bit of a mess and we're okay with that. Well, Martha wants to make sure that everything is perfect. She's doing what any reasonable person would have done. Now, what I love about this story and what surprises me most is not what Martha was doing, but it was how Jesus responded to her request. Because she's like, Jesus, would you tell my freeloading lazy sister to get up and help me? Help me. There's work to be done. Look at how Jesus responded. Go to verse 41. He says, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is, what is what? Say this with me. Mary has chosen what is better. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Jesus is saying, Martha, you're distracted by so many things. All these distractions, but Mary has chosen what is better. Here's the point. Martha was overwhelmed by everything that she felt had to be done. She had to clean the house. She had to prep a meal. She had to get the china done. She had to, she had to do all of this stuff. And Jesus is saying, Martha, you're distracted. You're distracted from what is most important. See, Martha was busy doing something for Jesus while Mary was busy simply being with Jesus. Martha's busy doing while Mary is focused on being. I want you to write this in your notes somewhere. Doing distracts from being. Doing distracts from being. Would you write that down? It's why we're called human beings, not human doings. And so many times, the things that we feel like we have to do 
will actually distract us from being the person that God has created us to be. You know, for some it is technology, it's these gadgets. For others, it's, it's any number of distractions that we feel like we have to do that keep us from being, maybe being all in the moment. You know what I find is if I put an emphasis on doing, I typically never get around to simply being. But if I focus on being, doing tends to take care of itself. Doing distracts us from being. Now, I know it's a bit of a stretch. Mary and Martha didn't have technology. There were no smartphones. There was no video games or TV shows. So this is a little bit of a stretch, but I think a lot of times we feel just like Martha did. When it comes down to technology, the biggest distraction of our day, many of us feel like I have to stay connected to what's going on in the world. I have to, I have to be connected to my device. Or maybe we say, I feel like I have to respond to every text message the moment it comes in. Right? I mean, come on. We now have these things called read receipts that tell us if somebody read the message we sent. Have you ever texted somebody and, and you saw that the message was delivered, then you saw that it was read, but they never responded to you? You're like, come on, I know that you read the message. Respond to me. Now, we don't realize they're probably doing something more important. They're probably practicing what I'm preaching right now. They're letting the distractions stay off to the side rather than letting them control their life. But we feel like we have to respond or we feel like we have to like everyone's status online because if we don't like their status, they're going to think we don't like their status. So we like their status. It doesn't really matter. We feel like we have to post pictures of what we're doing so people know just how epic our life is. Right? Right? We always look better on Instagram, don't we? We have to answer the phone every time it rings. We've got to respond to every email the moment it comes in. I, I propose that technology, if left unchecked, will absolutely distract us from the things that really matter in life. Statistics say that over half of Americans own a smartphone now. So if you own a smartphone, you are, you're, you know, you're, you're in over half, okay, half the population. Now, if you still got a flip phone or a dumb phone, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But most of us have smartphones now. Listen to this. This is pretty amazing. The average American checks their phone 150 times per day. And that seemed crazy. There was a conversation on the Today Show. They were talking about an app called Checky. I just downloaded it between services. You should get it. But it keeps track of how many times you check your phone in the course of a day. I won't point out who this person is. One of our staff members walked in and said, I'm already up to 43. 43. This was an, almost an hour ago, right? We have a tendency of being distracted, you know, with our technology, with our phones. And every time we're tuning into the distraction, we're tuning out from the people that are around us. 150 times a day, like what are we doing, right? What are we doing? I found a, a study that talked about what we're doing on our devices and, and the places we're using our devices. I want to show you this. I thought this was pretty interesting. We've got a graphic here to illustrate this. 35% of us are on our smartphones in a movie theater. If that's you, stop it, all right? Nobody likes that guy, right? You're distracting all of us. 35% though, that's over a third that are on our devices during a movie. Look at this, all right? 33% are on a dinner date, right? You've watched that couple. They sat down. They talked to the server more than they talked to each other because they're busy on their phones. Might as well just go home and save some money, right? They're, they're logged in on their devices. Check this out. 32% are at a child's school function. Okay, now I'm just going to, if you've ever sat through an assembly or an award ceremony, I totally get this, all right? I only care about my kid, okay? And so I, I'm guilty, guilty. Here you go. This one's awful. 55% while driving. That means when you go home today, over half the people are probably on their phone. All right? So watch out. All right? Now this one blows my mind. 12% in the shower. <laughs> what are you doing on your phone in the shower? And what kind of a case have you got? Is that a life-proof case? Is that... Here's what I want you to know. If you are on your phone in the shower, let me just tell you, you are not that important. All right? You're not. Or whatever... Whatever you are doing can wait, all right, till you get out of the shower. And if you are one, don't ever call me when you're in the shower, okay? I just want to set some ground rules there. It's not appropriate. And then the lastly, 19% in church or place of worship, right? Now here at LifePoint, we encourage it. I think that it's a, it's a neat opportunity that we have for people to use technology. So don't feel bad about that. I'm sure that at LifePoint, nobody is ever checking Facebook during church. I'm sure you're all taking notes, or so that's what I choose to believe, Right? But we get distracted by this. We use it all over the place. And I saw this article by the Washington Post. This is pretty interesting. And they said, you know, there's been mountain of studies that have demonstrated 
that cell phone and smartphone use makes us more selfish, more easily distracted, and more stressed. That the truth is, this little gadget here actually causes more stress and causes us to feel more overwhelmed in life. A survey last March suggested that 9 in 10 people feel that their loved one neglected them in favor of technology on a weekly basis. Isn't that crazy? That's sad. 90% of us would say we felt neglected. We felt like somebody, a loved one, chose their technology over time with us. And yet, if I'm being honest, I'm guilty of this. I'm guilty of doing this from time to time. Look at this. When parents and young children dine together, parents frequently pay the most attention to their phones. To their phones. And so we're teaching our kids that it's okay to be distracted and it's hurting our relationship with our kids. Now this I thought to be really, really interesting. A New York restaurant owner had written up and complained saying that selfish, cell phone-wielding patrons had hurt his business and inconvenienced his servers. Look at this. I, I got part of this. You can follow along and read this with me. He says, after comparing surveillance tapes from 2004 and 2014 and timing the customer interactions in each, he claimed to have noticed a distinct change. Patrons now take nearly three times as long to order and twice as long to finish their meal. Here's why. Watch this. Because they're photographing their food, <laughs> right? Photographing their food, taking selfies, and otherwise messing around on their phones, he wrote. And as a result, the business has seen an uptick in bad online reviews relating to long wait times and slow service. Isn't that crazy? It affects us. It affects every aspect of of our lives. Now, some of you are like, that's why I don't have one of those smartphones. Those things are evil. They're from the devil. Let me just hold on, hold on. I think we, we'd agree there, there's nothing evil about a phone. There's nothing evil about technology. This is amoral. It's not good. It's not bad. It's a tool. Matter of fact, I think that the church has an opportunity that no generation before us has had because of technology. I love the fact that somebody could literally be sitting in a message right now and a Bible verse could really resonate with you. It could connect with you or maybe, maybe a truth from God's word sticks with you that you could share that online on Facebook and hundreds of your friends that would never consider getting up and going to church would actually get to hear a truth from God's word simply because of technology. So I think it's a great thing when used appropriately. I think the church has the opportunity to get the message of hope to more people faster than ever before because of technology. Technology is not evil. It's, it's something that can enhance our life or it can distract our life. The, the real question is this. Are you using technology or is technology using you? Are you using technology or is technology using you? Do you own the phone or does the phone own you? That's a better question. Do I feel like I am... A slave to the phone. Last time I checked, I own the phone. There's a little button on mine that turns it off. I don't know if yours has that. But I can shut this thing down. And I can turn it off. And I can control this thing. And I want to tell you, it's important that we find times in our day that we're unplugging, that we're pulling away from the distractions. Because these distractions are what's overwhelming us. It's like Martha being distracted by everything she thought she had to do. Whereas Mary says, no, I'm choosing what is better I'm choosing what is better. The point is we shouldn't be mastered by anything. We shouldn't be a slave to anything. We shouldn't be a slave to our phone. We shouldn't be mastered by our phone. We shouldn't feel like we have to respond to this thing every time. Because what happens is when we do, we begin to deprive ourselves of what is better, our relationships with others. I love what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6. He says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do everything, but not everything's beneficial. And he says, I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. Now, obviously, he's not talking about cell phone use. He's talking about, I'm not going to be a slave to anything. I'm not a slave to my body. I'm not a slave to addictions. I'm not a slave to anything. I'm not going to be mastered by it. I want you to know, it's okay to use technology. It's not okay for technology to use you. It's not okay for you to be the slave to technology. I think it's time for a revolt. I think it's time that we say, you know what? I'm not a slave to this any longer. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to, I'm going to unplug for times because I don't want to live overwhelmed. I don't want the stress and the distraction. I don't want to be pulled away from things that are more important. Let me ask you this question. What would happen if you made a conscious decision and a commitment to say for seven days, I'm going to unplug from technology? For seven days, whatever the biggest distraction is in my life, I'm going to unplug from it just to prove that I can and to regain time in my life with 
better, with whatever better is in your life. How much time would you gain back in your schedule? Think about that. If the average American's on 150 times, some of you are better than average. That's not good. So how much time would you gain back if you had 150 opportunities to reconnect with what is better? How much would you gain back? Imagine the conversations that could happen around the table if you didn't allow your phone to be a distraction. What, what would you do first thing in the morning if you didn't have to catch up with everything that happened overnight online? How much time would you have back in your life? You know, my family did this this past Thursday evening. I had asked my wife, if you remember last week, the homework was to go do something that fills you up. And so I asked my wife, I said, what fills you up? And she says, I love family time together. When we're not distracted by technology and all this stuff is not, is, you know, we're not all distracted by being on our phones. I just love it when we can be together, kind of old-fashioned, be together. And so I said, okay, well, Thursday, when I come home, we'll call it No Tech Thursday. We will shut it all down. I prepped the kids. I was like, guys, you can do this. It's going to be good because I'll be the first to admit, I, I am, it's easy for us to all get absorbed in our devices. We could literally be in the same room, all on our devices. We're together, but we're not together, right? And so I said, we're going to put them all down and we're just going to hang out. We're going to do stuff as a family. We might play games. Here's what happened. At dinner time, we, you know, phones go down. We don't do phones at the table anyway. We put the phones down and then after dinner, and we went out and started throwing a Frisbee around. When was the last time you threw a Frisbee around, right? We threw a Frisbee around. We went over to a nearby park and we played around and we played soccer for a little bit and we just had fun. And for probably a two-hour window, two and a half hours, we were totally just together as a family and it was so much fun just watching the kids play together. You know, remember when we used to play outside with our imaginations? And it was just fun. And we got back and, you know, right before bed, they all jumped back on their phones and we discovered the world was still there. You know, everything, everyone survived, but it was so much fun. And it was great for us as a family just to capture that time back. Imagine what it would look like if for seven days you said, okay, I'm just going to unplug so that I can choose better. So here's my challenge. Here's my challenge. Should you choose to accept it? All right. Should you choose to accept it? Will you unplug from whatever the biggest distraction is in your life for seven days? This is the going dark challenge. The going dark challenge. I'm going to ask our team. We have a graphic to, to put up here on the screen. And here's how this works, all right? Now, we're all, we're all distracted by different things, okay? So you, for you, it may not be the phone, may, may be no big deal. So you're like, I could do that. That's no problem. Okay, well, what about TV? All right, maybe you're a binge watcher or maybe it's gaming, you know, whatever it is for you. Here's, here's the challenge. If you're willing to accept this challenge, now, some of you are like, I don't know. <laughs> That's a tall order. If you're having a hard time accepting this challenge, you need this challenge more than you know. All right, let me just say that. Some of you were like, well, I'm not addicted to my, you know, technology. And I would just remind you that denial is the first form of the first sign of addiction. All right, so you might want to ask your spouse or your parent, like, should I do this? All right, so if you are, here's what I want to encourage you to do. Right there in your seat, I want you to get your phone out. I want you to take a picture of the screen. And I want you to post it either on your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook. You can leave a little comment. I'm going dark. Hashtag see you in seven. And uh, just check out. Check out. And the main reason you're doing this is so that your friends know that you're still alive, all right? Some of you, after like three days, they'll be like, you haven't posted. Are you okay? They'll come by the house. They might even call you. <laughs> Do you remember these? Did you know that you can make calls with these things? It's crazy. Like, you can, people have numbers, and you can talk. It's, I know, it's mind blown, right? It's crazy. We don't even use them. They're phones, but we don't even use them to talk anymore. But here's the thing, I love it. People's phones are going up and they're like, I'm doing this. I'm, some of you were like, oh, some of you were like shaking, you're twitching, you're like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, right? Just delete the apps, all right? Just for seven days, seven days. Just say, I'm going to unplug. I'm going to choose better. For seven days, I'm going to choose better. I'm not saying this is until Jesus comes back. You can never do this again. I'm just saying for seven days, what if you just chose to unplug and for you, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's social media. You're going to post a picture of this and say, for seven days, I'm going dark. For others, it's like, all right, I'm, you know, I'm not going to veg out on the, in front of the TV for seven days. Now, I'm not telling you you can't watch anything. You know, I mean, there's games, you know, tonight and Monday night and Thursday night. Watch a game. But don't veg out. Don't do it at the expense of time with your kids and time with your family. You know, maybe it's easy to just get into online gaming and next thing you know, it's like morning and you're like, where did the day go? Maybe that's, that's your distraction. That's what's keeping you from what's better. But would you just take a picture of it 
and, and post it. I mean, maybe you're not even sure you can do that yet. You're like, well, at least get a picture of it, all right? And then you're like, I'm going to have to pray about this one, all right? And just say, I'm going to I'm going to unplug. I'm going dark. See you in seven. Next week, you can be like, I'm back. Did you miss me? And the reality is probably not, right? <laughs> probably did not. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to, to get rid of that distraction. But it, it's one thing to get rid of the distraction. It's another th- to focus on better, to put something better in play. I want to give you something better. You may want to just write this down. There's a Bible reading plan I want to give you. It's five days. It's five days. You can do this this week, Monday through Friday. It's the Overwhelm Bible Reading Challenge. It's just, you can go to lifepointnow.com slash overwhelmed plan. Overwhelmed plan. And here's what this is going to do. This is going to take you to an app on your smartphone or your computer. And it's, uh, uh, it's the Bible app. And it's just got loads of Bible reading plans. This will take you to a five-day Bible reading plan. How cool that, as a church, we'll be reading this together. And so when we find ourselves distracted or tempted to look at all these distractions and unplug, let's, let's take that and harness it and reconnect with something better. Mary chose what was better. And so I want you to pick something better this week. You don't have to do this Bible reading plan, but choose this, you know, tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'm not going to scroll through my feet. I'm going to do something better. Better is going to be diving into God's word and connecting with him. You know, we've always been distracted. There's always going to be distractions in life. You're never going to get rid of all distractions. That's just life. But when we choose to focus on something better, you know, I think about, of all the people in the Bible, I think that there, there's a guy in the Old Testament named Moses. Moses had to have had more distractions than, than any of us. Granted, it wasn't, you know, notifications on his phones and things like that, but Moses was a, was a guy that was chosen by God to do something pretty extraordinary. Moses was chosen by God to lead the Hebrew people from slavery in Egypt to freedom, to a, a place that Moses didn't even know, to this promised land that God had, and God was going to set them up to be a free nation. When God tells Moses, I want to use you to do this, Moses is like, "Uh uh-uh, wrong guy. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I can't do it. And he goes all through all these excuses why I can't do it. And finally, you know, God wins, and Moses is like, okay. So Moses is stuck leading millions of people on this 40-year road trip, right? Just imagine what it must be like to lead, you know, these millions of people for 40 years, and they're hungry. Are we there yet? They got to go to the bathroom. Have you ever done a road trip with your kids? Multiply that by like a million, all right? And I mean, it just, it, it wears on you. And so Moses has all of these distractions. And on top of that, he doesn't know where the next meal's coming from. He, people are thirsty. You know, he doesn't even know where he's taking them. They're being attacked by surrounding nations. I mean, it's just a mess. But in the book of Hebrews, in the New Testament, in Hebrews chapter 11, there's this little passage about Moses. And it, it gives us an insight as to how Moses was able to do what God called him to do and to tune out the distractions. And you and I need to do the same thing that Moses did. Look at what this says in Hebrews eleven twenty seven. 27. It says, It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. Moses had the opportunity to focus on all of the distractions around him, the people complaining, nations attacking, not sure where the next meal is going to come from, not sure where we're going. I don't have a map. There's no GPS yet. He could have been distracted by all this stuff, but he kept on going because he kept his eyes focused on the one who is invisible. He chose to focus on something better. And when we choose to focus on something better, we will tune out the distractions. Listen, we overcome distractions by choosing to focus on something better. Somewhere in your notes, just write this down, right? Choose better. Choose better. How do we go from being overwhelmed to overcoming? We choose better. We choose to spend time with our family. We choose to get into God's word. We choose to have quiet moments. We choose to go to bed a little earlier. We choose better. We choose to spend time with God that's going to refresh us and fill us up choose better. Let me just ask you this as I close. What are you distracted by today? What is that thing that's distracting you today? Would you choose better? Let's pray together.